This month is a good month for Home Assistant, so I highly recommend you stick around until the end. As of the 2024.4 April release of Home Assistant, you can now categorise your automations, making them easier to find. But this isn't the only quality of life improvement for this release. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the juicy new changes for this release, and there are many that I'm excited about. As always, this is based on the beta release, and so some things might change a little between the beta and the production release. So let's take a look at what the team has been up to. Alright, so let's talk about the feature that I and many others have been waiting for for a very long time. Categories. I've been running Home Assistant for many years, and to say that things get into a mess is an understatement. Not all of my automations stick to a name and convention, and sometimes you just use different words for the same thing. Categories have come to our rescue, meaning that you can now assign an automation a category, making automations more organised. This functionality is also available for scenes and for scripts. Note that the categories are not shared between automation, scenes and scripts, allowing you to create different or the same categories for each type. The documentation also mentions that you can assign categories to helpers, but as of version 2024.4.0b0, which is a beta release, this doesn't seem to be available, but maybe it will be available by the production release. To show all of your automations within a certain category, you can now have some great filtering and grouping options available. In the top right, you can group by category or choose not to group them. You can also group by state if you want to. You might not have even realised that in previous releases you could actually filter your automations by area. But for this release, the filtering and search options have been made cleaner and also you've got an option to filter by the new category functionality. I can hear you say, Mark, can we add more than one category to the same automation? The answer is no. But this is where the next piece of new functionality comes in. Labels. You can now assign a label or multiple labels to pretty much anything. You can add them to automations, scripts, devices and entities. If you go to settings and then areas and zones, then you'll see a new labels tab. This is where you can manage your labels and create new ones. You can assign an icon and a color to a tag, which I think is a really nice addition. You can then filter by these labels in the different dashboards. For example, you could have an important label and then assign this important label to your automations and entities. To add a label to an entity, you need to go to the more info box of the entity and then go into its settings. You will then see a box where you can amend or add labels. If you don't already have an existing label, it lets you create a new label from here as well. The release notes actually already have some good ideas of how you could start using labels in a practical way. You might think that the addition of categories and labels, you can now do everything that you possibly want. Well, there is one more thing that is new to help you organize and use your devices better. Previously, the top level was areas, which are usually set as different rooms in your home. You can then have devices or entities be assigned to these areas. They now have introduced a new functionality which is called floors, so that if you have a house or an apartment with multiple floors, then you can now assign these areas to floors in Home Assistant. There are some amazing community projects out there that have already created 3D floor plan dashboards within Home Assistant. And so I'm envisaging that in the future maybe with all this information that's stored inside Home Assistant, maybe you'll be able to create floor plans from within Home Assistant. How cool would that be? Now that we've gone over floors and labels, we need to talk about how you can use them. The service call functionality has been updated to allow you to use both of these within your automations. If you select a service and then choose an area, you'll now see that it includes the floors of the home within that list, allowing you to perform actions against all of the devices on that floor. For example, you might wish to turn all of the lights off upstairs. Currently, to do things like this, I use group helpers, but this will be a nicer way of doing it because you won't need to remember to update the groups each time you add a new device. You just need to add the new device to an area instead. And then on the right hand side, a possibly even more useful addition is the ability to control devices by their label. It looks like it's also clever enough to only display the labels that are relevant to the service that you've selected. For example, if you select the turn on light service, but no light entities have been assigned that label, then the label won't show in the list. 
If you have different types of entities with the same label, then rather than using a specific service such as turn on light, you might need to use the generic turn on service instead so that it will turn on all the different entities within that label. The final thing to mention on this stuff is that if you're more advanced and enjoy playing around with Ginger, then you can also use flaws and labels in your templates as well. Once this release is stable, I can't wait to upgrade my production instance and start using the new category and label functionality. Now let's move on to some different types of changes, but don't tune out just yet, because in a minute I'm going to talk about an improvement that they made to the new drag and drop dashboard that they added last month. For this release, they've added two new options when creating a new dashboard. You can now add a map dashboard and a web page dashboard. So the map dashboard already existed, but it didn't show as a dashboard and you couldn't do anything with it. They have now converted it to just a standard dashboard using the map card. This means that you can hide the map option on the left navigation bar if you want, or even delete the dashboard altogether. If you do use the map functionality, then you might want to create different maps showing different entities. Now the web page option is a similar change whereby instead of using the iframe card, you can now create a dashboard with links to your URL. This could be useful if you have some other local services that you want to access from within Home Assistant. Unfortunately, a lot of websites block embedding their content these days, so you'll have to give it a try and see if it works for you. Now back to some functionality that received a lot of attention in the last month, and that's the new section view introduced in the last release, which allows you to drag and drop on your dashboards, and it displays more intuitively on different devices. For this release, they have added the ability to restrict the maximum number of columns. I can't comment on how useful this will be yet, because I'm still stuck on YAML-based dashboards. I spent hours cleaning up years of mess in Home Assistant last week, and dashboards will be the next thing on my list to sort out. The next change won't be useful to me, but I can resonate with why it might be needed for other people. If you have a smart lock which has the ability to open the latch as well as unlock the door, then you used to have a button at the bottom of the more info box allowing you to open the door. They have now added a confirmation step when pressing the button, just in case you accidentally pressed it. I have some buttons on my dashboard that I accidentally press from time to time and turn a light on, so you definitely don't want this happening with your front door. The next thing they've added is a couple of screens to the Matter integration so that when you add a Matter device, it will guide you through what you need to do. Sometimes you need to go into another smart home app to get the device added to Home Assistant. I have found that setting up Matter devices is now quite a smooth process, but a challenge that I did have is actually understanding what the process was. So I think these screens will be a welcome addition for some people. The next thing to mention is performance improvements. Last release, they made Home Assistant boot twice as fast as it used to. Unfortunately, it only made it into the release notes after I did my last video, so I didn't mention it. But apparently, it's now even quicker again. I have certainly noticed previously that if you have an integration which is trying to find offline devices, then it does slow down the boot up time of Home Assistant. It seems like they might have now made that process a bit more asynchronous, so that even if you have lots of integrations, you should see a fast startup time. Now under noteworthy changes, we've had some refinements made to the user profile page, which I feel did need a bit of a tidy up. There's improved information on the relationships between an entity and a device and its integrations. And then there's also a new template functionality so that you can get a list of your repair issues. And finally, there's an improvement to the fairly popular RioLink camera integration. You can now start patrol mode for PTZ cameras and play quick reply messages. For new integrations, there are three new integrations for this release, and the Alarma one sounds quite interesting, but there isn't much information about it quite yet. There are quite a few backward incompatible changes listed, so make sure you have a read through of those and see if any of them impact you. There's also quite a big list of other changes that might be of interest. So as always, I'll leave a link in the description to the release notes. Well, that's it for today, but if you want to catch up on changes from previous releases, then check out my Home Assistant Releases playlist. And if you're interested in ESP Home, then be sure to check out that playlist as well. So thanks, until next time.